Hey guys, this is Ben from Ben's Game Time here with a zombies commentary actually. Uh, something a little bit different. And I wanted to just talk about uh, something. And I wanted to mention how uh, Call of the Dead is my favorite zombies map. Uh, yeah, just a commentary about that. So uh, let's hop into that. So this is my favorite map in zombies. And um, there's a few reasons for that as somebody is making George mad. <laughs> Uh, the first being, I just, I like it because it's kind of like, it was revolutionary. And it did that in a couple ways. Um, technically, it's not the first to do the Easter egg thing. The first one to do that was uh, Ascension. But you didn't get an achievement for it, and people really weren't all for that one. You know, you wouldn't go into a lobby and say, hey, nobody would be one of would want to do it. People would just want to play Ascension. But this is the first map where people were really like, hey, I want to do the Easter Egg, or hey, I want to do this, you know, and like, I think it was really cool that they put a nice little uh, achievement behind it. It was, and it really paved the way for the rest of it, um, rest of the maps to do the same thing. And also what I liked is how it brought the story more to the forefront than the other maps. Um, the story itself has always been kind of like an easter egg, I guess you could say. It's always been there, but not necessary, you know, it's, uh, you can find the radios that have the messages on them, you know, it was always a secret, like, little, little thing that they, uh, that they put into the game, but now, like, the story of zombies was brought to the forefront in this map, because it's like, okay, now you have to do these things for Rick Toppin and the gang, so that way they can get to Shangri-La and then eventually to Moon. So it brought the story more in, as like the one of the main focuses of the game rather than just surviving if you, if you choose to do it. And I thought that was a really cool idea. I thought it was awesome that they uh, actually made the story something that was a little more important than just a simple like little extra hidden thing. And while I applaud the Call of Duty uh, zombies games for always having like that story in the background and I like the idea of having the story in the background I also like the idea of it still being important enough to be in the forefront we like, think of it this way the story is always there always there and when this map came out technically also with ascension but let's just say for all intents and purposes this is like the one where I feel like they cared a lot more about it in this map than they did in Ascension. Not that they didn't care, it just felt like there was more effort put into the story for this map. It felt like you really... it was just something you wanted to do. Something you wanted to figure out. I'm sure with Ascension it, it was there, but again, you know, people weren't like, Oh hey, um, wanna do the Easter egg? People just wanted to play Ascension. But like with this map, it was in the forefront. People really were excited for it. It was a really cool thing, and there was a good award for it. And so people loved it, and I loved it. I I remember I spent months on this map trying to get the Easter egg with a bunch of different people, and eventually I did do it. Um, and I just like the how it like made the story more important. Yet at the same time, you don't have to do it. You know, you could still just play zombies to survive and get to round 30 or 40 or something like that. You didn't have to do it. It wasn't a, re a requirement. It was just something nice to do. And I really liked that it made the story more important, yet at the same time keeping what made zombies fun, just surviving. And I like that a lot about this map. And the second thing I like about this map is just the setting. As you can see, it's nice and snowy and all that. It's it's a different setting. I mean, all the settings have been different in Zombies. I mean, you can argue that some of them are very similar. Like, the World at War maps are pretty similar to each other, except for uh, Shinonuma. Um, but in Black Ops 1 and then into Black Ops 2, the, the maps were super different from each other. Like, this is the only snow-based map that is an official part of it. You know, and, you, and then you have the moon, which was really, really different, and you have transit, which was different, and then you had buried, all these, all these maps are pretty different from each other, and I like the setting on, on this one a lot, because 
like as you see the fog's rolling in you got the lighthouse i just i like it a lot it, it has it feels like it has this atmosphere to it that i really enjoy and i and it's part of the reason why it's my favorite uh next is what they like did with this map in terms of pack a punch as you saw the lightning was flashing and the lighthouse is now frantically going all over the place well they made it so that way the pack punch was in three locations either the second boat over there down at the uh, spawning area or behind the lighthouse and i like that they had like a moving system with the with the pack a punch like they did something similar with the perks in uh in shinonuma where when you'd buy the door it would spawn a random perk and then uh they did something different again in shangri la where it's like okay so the perks are different like they're in different locations but like i think it was that certain perks could always be in the same spot and i really liked um what they did with pack punch like the, the perks were consistent but pack punch is what was different and i like i like that a lot made it interesting uh it was a lot easier to pack punch at certain locations than others and it was also like a neat little detail they put in with the um with how like it would be in the water so you would have to um actually like go in and then be like okay now i gotta run out get to land okay now it's now it's done so now we like, go back into the water and there we go and so that was another touch i liked and that leads into the water itself that's like there's so many great like little details they put into this map that that's the main reason i enjoy it so much uh the the water itself will freeze you if you stay in it too long and that's a nice little touch because i can bet that this water is super cold and you would really hate to be in it for a long period of time get hy hyperthermia or whatever and so it's a nice little touch that you know it actually does work that way it's not just like oh zombie great I was <laughs> uh, that's what happens i guess but anyway i do like that like little detail of oh hey you stay in the water too long you're gonna freeze to death and so it's realistic although so many people argue that zombies and call of duty in general is un an unrealistic game i found that to be really realistic and then when you put george in there George Romero is probably the one of the top reasons why I love this map so much because it's a really cool boss to have. Previously, it would be like, oh, it would appear every couple rounds, every once in a while. You know, you'd have the dogs, or you'd have the monkeys, or you'd have uh, what do you call it? Ah, uh, he almost got to me. Whatever, it's fine. It's fine, buddy. Anyway, um, or you'd have the Pentagon thief. You know, just some boss show up every couple rounds. But with George, he was always there from the start. And I really like that. It's like, it adds a certain fear factor to it. Like, that factor of, like, there's somebody coming after me. But it's so slow that I don't know what it is. And if you can hear my phone in the background, I apologize. I'm just going to let it ring, whatever. And so I'm, I'm just gonna let it ring. Uh, anyway, it's nothing important. Okay, so back to what we were talking about. So it's like it has a factor of it being like scary. Like, look, he's climbing over that like little railing. You know, he's 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 just chasing you, and it's it's creepy, and you don't know where he is most of the time. I could be over on the boat, and I don't know where he is. He could be coming after me. He could be coming after somebody else. Um, it's a lot scarier when you're playing solo, I guess, because, like, I don't play a lot of solo, but, you know, he's always chasing you specifically, so. That is a really cool little thing that they did, was have the boss always be there. Uh, and I, I believe this is the only map that actually does that. Sure, like, yeah, the Napalm and the Shrieker Zombie from Shangri La only show up every once in a while. Uh, what else we got? Yeah, Moon, well, they did that again in Moon, but, you, like, it was a lot harder to kill George than it was to the, uh, the astronaut in Moon, so I feel like that's why I like George a lot more than, yeah, I'm down again. See, that's what happens when you don't have a good weapon. 
Oi, uh, person in the glitch, help me out here. I'm gonna crawl to you, and you revive me, okay? I don't have a weapon, so you're gonna have to uh, bear with me not getting... not being able to kill a lot of zombies. <coughs> Excuse me. But, like, George wasn't annoying. Like, yes he was, but he wasn't as bad as the ast astronaut zombie. The astronaut zombie would always be be there and he would steal your perks he would teleport you to somewhere else george would just attack you that's all he would do he wouldn't like weaken you or anything he would just attack you oh i need that thank you very much um so that was one thing i really liked is how george would be like always there he wouldn't kill he would kill you if you were you'd get hit too much and a cool little detail is that you could like use george to your advantage and let you cue the crawler zombie and then there you go, you got a uh, crawler zombie that can't freeze to death in the water. And then you have how the water actually calms George down, which was a really great idea. And it really kind of like, it goes with the joke that like, or the idea that famous like people, actors, directors, uh, sports people like to take cold baths, I don't know. I don't know if that was intentional or not, but um, I don't know, I just find that funny. And so, like, the George boss was really well done. I love it a lot. Uh, probably my favorite favorite boss as well in Call of Duty history. Um, and then... And that's not... And that's not... And this isn't to put down all the other maps. All the other maps had were really great in some other way, shape, or form. You know, well, except for Shangri-La, but that's... Maybe because I didn't play it as a lot. Uh, I'm trying to... I'm trying to kill the zombies. Ah, okay. He needs to revive. Okay, uh, this ain't getting in well. Jump! Okay. But, um... See, that's the thing when you don't have a gun in zombies, is that, um, you're just gonna go down a lot. And he's gonna let me go down, because he's enough. Or not. So, uh, let's just keep commentating, you know, uh, we're gonna get another game, so, why not? Uh, so. Like, uh, all the maps really have something great for them. All the maps are really innovative. You know, Black Ops 2 introduced the bank, the weapon storage, a lot of things, uh... You know, and then, like, Buried has, like, the box you can place down. Uh, Call of the Dead. Mob of the Dead, actually. Excuse me. Mob of the Dead has the afterlife stuff. A lot of really, really great ideas for each map. Every map had a really great idea. But I feel like this had the most of the good ideas. And so... And they had a couple firsts, you know. Uh, this map introduced uh, Deadshot Daiquiri. Not the most useful per perk, but, uh, you know, still it introduced something. And, like, the methods of transport in this map are pretty good, too. I like um, how you got the uh, zip lines that you can use to get from the lighthouse to the, uh, to the boat. And also you have the other ones. So... Those are really good, and the, not as good, but also there is the uh, the um, the like launcher on the first boat that launches you to the lighthouse. Uh, not as good, especially if you don't want to use it and you accidentally do. But um, it as well is um, something great, and so. And the last thing I want to, and there's two more things that I love about this map. The first is the scavenger. It's an exclusive weapon to this map alone. And a lot of the maps have exclusive weapons. It's not a first time that it's an ex there's an exclusive weapon. You know, um, 
but like uh, five has the uh, freeze way, the freeze yeah, the freeze gun that turns into Winter's Howl when pack a punch, you know, and then like you have you had the Gersh devices introduced into Ascension, but they were put back in later for Moon. But you had the QEDs in Moon as well, the the um, dual wield zap guns, and in Shangri La you had the Shrink Ray. So a lot of great exclusive weapons across all of Zombies, but this one has the Scavenger, and I think the Scavenger is one of my favorite exclusive wonder weapons because of what it does, you know, it's it's the main weapon you want to use to kill George, like, if you want, if you do want to kill George, you gotta pack-a-punch it, and then you can just, uh, fire a bunch of Scavenger rounds into him, and they're really powerful, I think they're one of the most, uh, powerful, um, actually uh powerful guns in the in existence i'm not 100 percent sure on that but they are at least in the top five strongest and so that gun is really good uh sadly the vr11 isn't as good i mean you need it for the easter egg and that's why the only reason why you would ever want it but i think that even still and also there was that one achievement that required you to pack a punch the VR-11 and then blow up the uh, human that and, like you would create with blast from the VR-11. Ironically, I guess you want to put it that way. <coughs> uh, excuse me again. But um, yeah, the Wonder Weapons, at least the Scavenger anyway, was a really, really essential uh, weapon to get. If you didn't get it. You know, that's not good, but if you or a teammate did get it, that was amazing. You know, you could kill George easily, and then they're like, the reward, the, the reward you get from George and the and the Easter egg itself, you know, you get the Wonder Waffle DG2. You know, that's a really great weapon right there. And it, was, it, was, it was taken out from more... You know, from Black Ops, and so it was like, oh man, I really want to get this gun, but I can't because it's in World at War. Well, now you could because you completed the Easter egg, or you did kill George, and you also get a free perk from George. So, you know, that was nice that you can actually get some rewards from it. Uh, really good ones, whereas with Ascension, I believe, oh, you got a free perk, and I think you did anyway. I'm not 100% sure. Again, I never did the, uh, Ascension Easter egg. So you can do that, and, but you'd also get death machines, and death machines aren't really that great. I mean, they're a regular drop. It's just that it was an extended one, I think. But yeah, this map is really well done with the, its weapons and its Easter egg rewards because it's it's just that you actually have to um, you actually do get fairly rewarded, and it helps you survive. And the scavenger is one of the best weapons, I think, in Zombies history. I mean, it's a sniper, so it would be awesome if it was something else, but I think that's, like, it's the best sniper, though. And that's a really good thing, because there weren't that, there's never really that many good snipers when it comes to zombies, because you're actually, like, taking care of, like, multiple zombies rather than just, like, one or two. <coughs> I mean, if you're a good sniper and you can really use it, that's great. But um, not everyone is the best sniper, you know. I'm, I'm a, I'm a decent one. But yeah, I feel like the scavenger really put in a mood that okay, here you can actually like use a really good sniper early on, you know. Like it, it set a tone that. Snipers aren't always that bad. Here's an example with the scavenger. And so the last thing I want to talk about that makes this map my favorite is the Easter egg song. Uh, the Easter egg songs have always been really good in zombies. But I feel like this one is my favorite. It's uh, if for, you, for those who have, do not know what it is, it is... Uh, not Ready to Die by Avenged Sevenfold. And I th I'm not 100% sure, I can't confirm nor deny this, but I think at least it was ex it was made specifically for this because of its line of, um, 
uh, mentioning Group 935, which is part of the whole zombie story. Um, maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Maybe it's just a coincidence. Um, but yeah, so... I just love this Easter egg song so much. And I feel like it's the greatest. Like, this was my first Call of Duty game, admittedly. And I really love zombies. I love the, how you had the Easter egg songs, and I was always, like, looking forward to them every after every map would release. And I think Black Ops had a lot of great ones. Uh, and it was... And Black Ops, not only being my first Call of Duty, had a lot of, a lot of other first experiences for me. Uh, it was the first uh, time I heard an Eminem song with the 5 Easter egg. And it was the first time I heard Avenged Sevenfold with this map's Easter egg song. I feel like it was a great introduction to them. They have, they have good music and I am not trying to like like plug them. They're not sponsoring this video. I'm just saying from a personal preference, I do like their music. And I like what they've done with Call of Duty in the Black Ops series and how they've um, put in songs, you know, they put in Carry On in Black Ops 2, they put Shepherd of Fire in as well. Um, but this was my first introduction to them. This is the first time I ever heard their music, and I liked it. I really did. I, this was my favorite, and it still is my favorite, Easter egg song in all of Call of Duty history. And... It introduced me to the band, and I think that's a great thing that they did. I'm gonna turn on the power now and then buy the box. But um, yeah, so like Call of Duty Black Ops One was a game of a lot of firsts for me, and this this really had a lot of great firsts from the Easter egg that gave you an achievement to the whole um, uh, East the uh, like, and then, like, for me personally, it was my first FPS that I really sat down and played a lot of, and, um, then you also had, like, the music in the game that were first for me, so, I have a special connection with this game, and that kind of also contributes to why it's my favorite, this map is my favorite, because it comes from this game, but, I just, and I also like uh, how the Easter egg song in this map is so closely together because in the other maps they were far the the like rock or teddy bear or whatever locations were far apart you only have to spend uh, 750 points twice and then you already have the ah oh, come on yeah and then you already have the song you can activate it like really early and that's a really great thing and that's something I like a lot about it is that it is really close together and so, that's base, and all those reasons combined is basically why this is my favorite map in Call of Duty Zombie History. And uh, join me back later for some more Zombies Month.